Hot Lama Yemi is a strikingly exceptional game, and one of the reasons for this is undoubtedly the soundtrack. This game's OST became an instant classic when it released. But why? Is it really that good? Let's find out. A quick overview before we start. Hotline Miami soundtrack contains 22 songs contributed by 9 different artists. Since artists tend to develop their own unique styles, even within the same genre, we'll move from one artist to another while taking a closer look at each song they contributed to the game. And while we're on the topic of genres, Hotline Miami falls into the category of synthwave music, a style within the electronic music genre that puts a strong emphasis on creating a feeling of nostalgia about a specific 1980s aesthetic, mostly found in media centered around Miami. Suddenly the game's name makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? Keep in mind that music is ultimately subjective and I'm only really presenting my opinion in this video. Don't take it too seriously. Let's take a listen. <laughs> The first band we'll talk about is Coconuts. They made only one contribution, but it's probably one of the most iconic tracks, Silver Lights. The funny thing about this band is, they dropped one EP in their Bandcamp page back in 2010, which obviously featured Silver Lights, and then they disappeared. The only information available about them are a few clips of a live show hidden on the private channel of one of the members. No interviews, no social media accounts, no announcements, updates, not even names of the members. Just nothing. Well, at least that was true until 2022. While many fans were waiting for years, some hopefully optimistic, others confusingly disappointed, Coconuts finally came through with a follow-up release in their bandcamp. The second EP, titled 2, features five new songs, so if you're a fan, be sure to check it out, it might be the last time we hear from them. The music of the New Yorker trio is hard to put into words. As someone who is not very familiar with the following terms, it reminds me of an acid rock sound, but with a modern synthwave twist, if that makes any sense. The intro of Silverlight sounds what I imagine it would feel like to go completely insane, or to have an unbelievably bad trip that makes you question the reality of your own existence. The groovy bass feels like waking up, trying to figure out where you are, what is going on, and once the guitar kicks in, you just know that something is completely wrong. I love it. Since this track is audible over one of the few sections where you actually pay attention to Hotline Miami's, well, let's call it storyline, you might not even realize how atmospheric the song is, and that only speaks in favor of its perfectly matching sound. I highly recommend you listen to it again with a less divided attention, you will not be disappointed. Al Huervo, also known as Nicholas Ackerblad, contributed three songs for the game, while two of them might go unnoticed by a lot of players. Albeit not a soundtrack, I believe it's important to mention his other contributions to this game, as Nicholas also created this magnificent cover art of the game. His first acoustic contribution is titled Crush, and plays during segments where you simply go to your vehicle before you enter the next stage. Crush is very low profile, has no apparent structure and consists of a multitude of different elements, including long notes and static noises floating seamlessly in one single plane of sound. To me, it has a certain aspect of relief to it, while it could also be perceived as the calm before the storm, both of which fits its in-game role quite well. His second entry is Daisuke, which to me sounds a lot more like quote-unquote traditional synthwave, including the genre-defining nostalgia. First off, I love the voices in the intro. If you listen to Daisuke on low volume, you might have missed them, but they truly set a mood for the rest of this track. Amazing. Daisuke is overall rather reserved. The instruments share the spotlight, never overstaying their welcome. 
My favorite part is by far the piano. It's not every day you hear traditional piano sound in genres like these, and the piano in Daisuke sounds particularly dreamy. It sounds like there's a lot of reverb on it, while it's placed more towards the background, which increases its nostalgic qualities by a multitude. Fantastic. A quick note on its in-game role, Daisuke is only audible when you're in one of the shops in between the chapters. Even though this might be rather uninteresting from a gameplay perspective, the casual nature of these sections allows you to fully immerse yourself in Hotline Miami's story, aesthetic and, of course, the music. So Daisuke has a surprisingly good spot to shine. After listening to it just once, I already got the feeling this might become my favorite track, but we'll see if that still holds true by the end of the video. So far, I love it. El Huervo's third song is called Turf, and is one of the songs that is exclusive to only one chapter, excluding a few chapter outros. Turf plays during the last chapter of Jacket's story called Showdown. It has a much more eerie vibe than its counterparts, especially before the groove really gets going. Again, it gives me a sense of the calm before the storm, which seems quite fitting. Once the remaining instruments kick in, the track becomes a lot more grounded. It's more densely packed with a variety of sounds, while each section adds more and more layers. While I do enjoy the overall vibe of the track, especially for the showdown chapter, I gotta say that the busier sections of Turf feel a bit overwhelming, if not stressful at times. At the same time, this sense of overstimulation might be very fitting for the climactic end of Jacket's roller coaster of a journey. I can appreciate it certainly, and while I wouldn't listen to it just for the sake of the music, it works very nicely as an in game track. Elliot Berlin, or rather his duo Telemark, is our next contributor. On a side note, Elliot also plays keys in the agro tech slash industrial metal band Combi Christ, just in case there are fellow metal fans among my audience. Back to Telemark. Their in game song is called Music Per Automatic, which is a slightly modified version of their pre existing song, which was also performed under a different name prior to its release. The Hotline Miami version is not something I would classify as synthwave, even though I might be completely wrong on that. I've seen the term dark wave being noted somewhere on their bandcamp, so that might be something more fitting, maybe? This piece is the fastest track yet, and it certainly has resemblance of music you would hear on a lot of dance floors, depending on the venue you visit. While I bet it goes hard in the club, I have to say that I'm not entirely convinced. Its vibe does differ from the others, and while its high energy is certainly appreciated in a hectic game like Hotline Miami, I can't say that it's one of my favorite tunes. But it's solid. Jasper Byrne is a solo musician from the UK who contributed the titular tracks Hotline and Miami. Jasper's tracks tend to go more into what I describe as an ambient electronic sound instead of the typical synthwave style. Hotline focuses heavily on the groove and rhythmic components. I like the minimalist use of the synth chords and melodies, it's a nice contrast to the previous pieces. I do have to say that I don't enjoy some of the timbres, like the bass synth and parts of the drum kit, the kick drum in particular. That is purely my taste though, I just tend to favor different timbres in this regard. The track is used in multiple levels, and as background music for the game, it certainly works well. I do stand corrected on my previous notion, as the track Miami is more resemblant of what I know as Synthwave. While also very minimalist in its approach, this track has a very dreamy atmosphere, which I attribute to the high-pitched electronic notes that just sit above the rest of the mix. It sounds unreal, almost magical if you will. Paired with the simple yet pleasant idea which holds this tune together, we have a very nice entry at our hands, or rather in our ears. Quite a shame that Miami only plays during the score summary.
Our next artist is Moon. With a total of four tracks in the first Hotline Miami game, he almost takes the trophy for most contributions, but the actual winner is yet to be named. Moon's tracks, however, definitely take the title for most level coverage, as the tracks appear in a total of nine different chapters. Fun fact, this guy was still in high school when the game came out. Absolute insanity. The first piece is called Crystals. This track has a very bouncy feeling, mostly because of its melody that is almost exclusively comprised of short staccato notes. On top of that, it travels from left to right of the panning, which you can hear very well with good headphones. On my first listen, I found the track interesting, but a bit hard to listen through, almost a little annoying. After a few more attempts though, I gotta say it kind of grew on me. The bass line with the long notes adds a very nice layer of harmony that creates a bittersweet feeling. A feeling that I come to expect from this genre, so Crystals does not disappoint. This beautifully portrays that nostalgia is a coin with two sides. Sometimes it sounds cheerful, like remembering fond memories from the past, being glad to have taken part in them. And sometimes it sounds melancholic, mourning over a past long lost to the imperishable nature of time. Crystals reminds me of that, and it does so with very few musical elements. Simple, but beautiful. The next song, Hydrogen, has quite a long build-up, but immediately you realize this is nothing like the previous track. Hydrogen is focused. Hydrogen has drive, relentlessly moving towards a destination that is not yet specified. Once the staccato-heavy melody kicks in, you can fully immerse yourself in the soundscape. I think this song is fantastic as an in-game soundtrack, as it doesn't take much of your attention span and aids you in focusing on the hectic and sometimes overwhelming nature of Hotline Miami's chapters. I do have to say that it doesn't quite hold up when I focus entirely on the music, so you could argue that other tracks do a better job of fulfilling both of these roles. Just not entirely my cup of tea, I guess. Next in line is Paris. While slightly different in concept, you can certainly recognize a typically Moon-esque style here. Paris's instruments and synth sounds have different timbres and seemingly more effects on them, making them sound more surreal and dreamier. This fits very well with Hotline Miami's overall concept, where everything looks and feels like an acid trip. I really enjoy that the music turns up its intensity around the middle, which is something I was somewhat missing with Moon's other entries. It still retains its surreal qualities, and I'd say that this combination definitely makes me favor Paris over Hydrogen and Crystals, even though Crystals turned out to be extremely enjoyable after a few listens. His final contribution is Release. This track plays during some of the more character-specific fights in the game, so it has quite a unique purpose. I must admit, after listening to the full tune a few times, I'm not insanely hyped about it. It's a solid electronic piece that creates a nice ambience you can lose yourself in while playing the game, which is great, don't get me wrong. The sound selection is nice, everything is in harmony, if you will, and there is a nice balance between all of the elements present. but it would feel unfair to compare it to some of the previous entries that just felt more convincing as standalone pieces of music. I don't know, it's just missing something that I desperately want to continue listening to, something to make me come back to the track. I'd say it's a very nice contribution, but not one of my favorites. Next up is Scattle. Scattle is a DJ and producer who also contributed tracks for other games, like Super Meat Boy. Scattle does take the medal for most contributions to this game with a total number of five tracks. The first one is Knock Knock. 
This tune has a lot of different layers, and some of the higher synth sounds play a lot with the panning, as in jumping from left to right constantly. It doesn't have the bouncy feel of Moon's crystals, though. To me, this track has a feeling of relief. I can imagine myself as one of the characters in Hotline Miami, having completed one of the intense missions and driving back home in my car, the cool airstream caressing the bloodstained surface of my animal mask. This track does contain the trademark nostalgia TM of the genre, but in a more upbeat fashion than some of its predecessors. Flatline, however, is very different. This tune has a very special place in the game, as it serves as the backing soundtrack for the trauma level. I don't want to spoil too much of the game, but it is at this chapter that the game recontextualizes everything that's happened before, and it is here where you begin to understand what could actually be going on. I remember that this point in the game had quite an impact on me as a player, even though I had the music turned off. Now, I wish I hadn't, as Flatline raises the impact of this chapter to unimaginable heights. The music is calm, but not soothing. It perfectly conveys the feeling that something is wrong, but you can't do anything about it, as it is the first time in the game where you are not in charge. Or is it? To make things even worse, you just can't seem to know what is truly real anymore. I really like the choice to exclude almost all drumming elements from this one. Even though there is a steady pulse to this piece, mostly conveyed by the bass, the absence of predominantly percussive elements gives more room for the gentle melodies to unfold and makes Flatline sound way more intimate. I love it. Inner Animal takes us to a different point of the game. It serves as the music for some of the final stages of the storyline, which is evident by its determined nature. This one is another track that sounds very solid to me, but I find it hard to remember any specific parts of it that I would want to return for. This is probably due to my rather shallow experience with electronic music in general, as we are typically more capable of noticing and thus appreciating intricate details if we are familiar with the conventions of the genre. For some reason, this track just doesn't really do it for me, but it's very nice background music nonetheless. It's safe now, place in Biker's home, so the name fits perfectly. The music follows that idea, as this is certainly one of the tracks in the game that makes me feel, well, safe. The beloved idea of nostalgia is present in an interesting form. When I listen to It's Safe Now, I can imagine the character feel relieved that whatever unspeakable acts they had to commit mere moments ago are finally behind them, while I can also imagine them remembering a time before all of this. Before the calls, the violence, the adrenaline, the never-ending threat in their life. Musically, I enjoy the lead melody, containing short melodic bits that fade in and out of the soundscape. The bass is also very pleasant and causes a feeling of warmth that, to me, delivers the safety to this track. This is a nice one. We've arrived at Scatel's final contribution, to the top. What I immediately notice is that the sound of the drum kit, particularly the snare drum, reminds me of a few soundtracks I've already covered on this channel. More specifically, it reminds me of Julia Chang's soundtrack from Tekken 3. I don't know, the snare just sounds similar, doesn't it? By the way, if you happen to be a Tekken fan, don't forget to check out my Tekken OST reviews. Back to the top. It has a nice groove that stands out from the other tracks, even though the rhythm can feel a bit disorienting in the beginning. I like how the bassline follows the melody one-to-one -one and actually stops at the same time, leaving more room for the other sounds in between. The track is overall fairly busy, with a lot of different elements flying around the mix, but none of them overstay their welcome, so I'd say there is a nice balance. 
Overall, I don't find the main melody all too memorable, and To The Top doesn't offer that much variety, but it's certainly pleasant to listen to. Sun Ara, also known as Cameron Stallones, is a musician from Texas who has been creating and releasing experimental music since 2008, including two pieces that would later contribute to Hotline Miami's stellar sounds. The first is the main menu theme, Horse Steppin. Perfectly encompassing the sweeter tastes of nostalgic daydreaming, this soundtrack lures you in with a strong sense of peaceful calm. Remember hearing this for the first time before jumping into the game? Oh, how young and naive we must have been. I gotta say, the chill atmosphere and the occasional slow vocals remind me of reggae songs, even though Horse Steppin obviously lacks certain very typical reggae elements. Sanara has actually collaborated with the reggae group The Congos at some point, so I think it's not too far-fetched. To me, this track is very tranquilizing. It makes time pass so quickly, you don't even realize that the track is 10 minutes long until you wake up from your psychedelic fever dream it puts you into. I really enjoy this piece, it's a shame you don't get to listen to it in-game more frequently, but I suppose it wouldn't fit with the stressful nature of Hotla Miami's gameplay. Legardless, an amazing track, certainly one of my favorites. The second one is Deep Cover, and you're surely very familiar with this one. It plays whenever you're in Jacket's apartment, which is quite often. Deep Cover has the psychedelic knob cranked up to 11. Everything sounds blurry, fuzzy, muddy, whatever you want to call it. The individual sounds feel all over the place and have a slightly depressing touch to them. This fits so well with Jacket's messy apartment and his equally messy life situation. There are some clear similarities to Horse Steppin, such as the vocals, the overall slow tempo and somewhat chill vibe. Sanara clearly has a recognizable style. Knowing the plot of the game and how the perception of most events abruptly changes at a certain point, the blurry nature of Deep Cover seems even more perfect. Is that a thing? More perfect? Anyway, while I enjoy listening to this, the track does feel overwhelming on its own, especially if you listen to the full 8 minutes. Some people seem to irritated by the occasional vocal lines, but I gotta say they didn't bother me at all. It was more so the oversaturation of all these sounds that made it difficult for me. Nonetheless, a fantastic piece of what is Hotline Miami's OST puzzle. Next up is Perturbator. Perturbator contributed three tracks in total. Electric Dreams is a very slow and dreamy track. It plays during the end credits for Jackets, and to me feels like a very melancholic experience. I love how minimalist the drumming is here. It makes each and every snare hit so much more impactful. Electric Dreams contains a few synth melodies that exist simultaneously, sometimes fading in and out of the whole soundscape, trading the spotlight between each other. These short and repeating patterns work really well over the harmonic progression, which adds the bittersweet feeling I was talking about. It really fits the ending. I love it. Okay, first thought I had while listening to his second piece, Hotline Disco, is that it reminds me of the music in Brotator. Really goes to show how much this OST and the synthwave genre in general have impacted the video game music landscape. Or maybe I'm really clueless about electronic music. Hotline Disco is a lot more energetic, with a steady 4 to the floor drum beat and a groovy bass synth. Really makes me want to move along. Perturbator seems to like his slow, somewhat dramatic melodies on top of these tracks, and Hotline Disco is no different. There are a few other similarities to Electric Dreams, such as some of the chords, but I don't want to go into much detail. You can definitely guess that both were made by the same person. Anyway, the track has one point where it seems to end, but then continues with an even stronger repetition of the main part of the song. Not gonna lie, he got me there. 
Overall, I like the sounds, the groove, the overall vibe. It's very nostalgic and synth-wavy. Looking at the grand scheme of things though, it's not one of my top contributions, and probably not a track I would return to often. Perturbator's third contribution, Vengeance, is even faster than the previous one and contains one synth track that basically spams 16th notes of mostly the same pitch, making the piece sound overall more hectic. I like it. There's a rather subtle repeating melody on top this time that I really adore. Not sure why, but something about it hits different. You can hear it every four bars during the early sections of the track, but it is during what I would call the chorus, I guess, where the melody is being looped quickly and really shines. The chord progressions in this chorus is also insanely well selected, I really love it. It might be my favorite element from Vengeance. It spans two progressions of four chords each, and while they start with the same two, the second variation goes up stepwise, which is emphasized by the bass. I really love this, for some reason my brain releases happy chemicals when I hear it. Alright, enough music theory for today. Vengeance is one of these tracks I had to listen to a few more times immediately after writing the script for it, not because I had to analyze it more thoroughly to give my opinion, but rather because I simply enjoy it so much. This is easily one of my favorites so far, definitely the top track from Perturbator for me. I know it was only used in the announcement trailer, but it is officially part of the OST now, so I think including it is fair game. I will certainly listen to this outside of video making or playing the game. Brilliant. That brings us to our final musical contributor, Erik Surke. Erik is a Norwegian musician who has written music for a variety of video games, most notably the Spelunky series. His single contribution to Hotline Miami is titled A New Morning and is the OST of the end credits for Biker. His story involvement is quite a contrast to Jackets, as is his final moment. This is certainly reflected in the soundtrack, as A New Morning sounds a lot more dramatic than Electric Dreams. It does have a somewhat depressing touch to it, I can't put a finger on why exactly that is though. In terms of harmony, it appears that A New Morning includes elements typically found in other genres like Neo Soul, where you move the same chord to different root notes in order to create less conventionally tonal progressions. Okay, enough music theory blah blah, but I wanted to point this out as I think this is the only track in here that does this, and it fits really well with the overall mood of A New Morning. While the first listen didn't convince me that much, I do like it more the longer I listen to it. Especially the little synth solos at the end, they make A New Morning really stand out among the others. It does end in a rather anticlimactic fashion though, and is shorter than you would expect. I guess you could argue that this fits with Biker's conclusion in the game, depending on which ending you get, but musically I think this might be a bit of a missed opportunity. Overall, very enjoyable, but I don't think it makes it into the top selection for me. Alright, now let's take a look at the whole picture. Is the music in Hotline Miami good? While that is a subjective matter, I definitely have to yes, absolutely. But you knew that when you clicked on the video, didn't you? As someone who is not extremely well versed in electronic music, I certainly found a good number of tracks that I really enjoy. They all work together flawlessly to support Hotline Miami's unique aesthetic and ambience. This is quite an accomplishment given how many different creators had a part in this. Amazing to see. I do believe that some of these pieces work better as background music within the game, while others might require a bit more focused listening to really unfold themselves to the audience, but that's a common thing in video game OSTs in general. I find it remarkable how much this game's soundtrack seems to have had an impact on the industry and later video game releases. Kudos to the developers for sticking to their visions and seeking out all these musicians, and of course kudos to the musicians for creating all of these amazing pieces. I am very eager to find out what awaits us in Hotline Miami 2. Make sure to stay tuned for a follow-up video.